welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at one of the analytical techniques that you cover in higher chemistry, which is chromatography. You'll have met chromatography before in high school. You may have done paper chromatography of the dyes on Smarties or in pens, and now you might look at different types of chromatography. So all chromatography works in the same way. It's used to separate compounds and it consists of two phases. Stationary phase, which you will have seen before as paper, or it can be um, a solid called silica, or it can even be a liquid. You then have a mobile phase, which is a solvent or a gas which passes through the stationary phase. The mixture moves through the stationary phase carried by the mobile phase, and through different interactions with the mobile and stationary phase, each component is separated out. So each component will have a different interaction and therefore whilst they start as a mixture some of them will take longer to move through whereas others will be quite quick. So this allows you to see different separations. There are lots of different types of chromatography. The most simple is paper chromatography. This is where you would spot onto the bottom of the paper um, your mixture. You would then probably put this into some sort of beaker to hold it with a small amount of solvent in the bottom. The solvent will then travel up the paper and as it does so it will carry the mixture up and it will separate out as it goes. A related version to paper chromatography is thin layer chromatography and this is usually done with um, uh, aluminium or plastic or glass backing with silica or alumina on the top as a powder which is being pressed onto it and you simply spot on as you would with paper put it into the solvent and then the solvent carries up. It's the exact same process as paper chromatography but is usually much quicker. Column chromatography is more complicated where you have a glass column that you fill with silica. You then put your mixture into the top as a solution and then it carries on down through the column. So you can see in this diagram here you have this purple mixture and then as you let this carry through, you have to make sure that it stays wet the whole time. So you put solvent into the top. And as the, the mixture moves down, the two components separate out. So the red one is much quicker. So it'll separate first, so it doesn't have as strong an interaction. And then the blue one will separate out. And you can use this if you actually want to separate your product from, say, a byproduct, and you want to keep them the different things. Gas liquid chromatography is more complex still, where you would inject your sample into a machine like this and then it would travel through the machine and it would separate out as it goes and then be collected at the other end. The quicker that it comes out, then the shorter the retention time and you would see this on a graph. I'll draw you um, a quick sketch of what a graph might look like. Okay, so you would probably have something like abundance up at the side here and then retention time here and your graph would look like a series of peaks where the area under the peak would be the amount of that component. For every type of chromatography we have a equation that we can use. So this is the RF equation, so the retention factor. So we're looking at this in terms of spots here. So we're going for distance travelled by the spot divided by the distance travelled by the solvent front. So you would measure with a ruler so you can see how far the spots go. So we would have started with our purple mixture down here and then it separated out into these two um, spot. So I'm going to move the ruler a little bit closer. First of all we're going to have a look at the red spot. So the red spot, if we take the top of the spot, has travelled by 3.4 centimetres. So we're going to have RF is 3.4 divided by the distance that the solvent front has travelled, which is 10.7. The RF value for the red spot is 0 0.3, 
we're then going to do the same for the blue spot. So taking the very top of the blue spot here, it's at 8.1. So our RF value is 8.1 divided by the same solvent form, which is 10.7. The RF value for the blue spot is 0 0.76. Pause the video now and try and calculate the RF value for each of these three spots. So if we start by looking at the red spot, we'll have RF equals the distance travelled by the spot, which this time is 2.5, divided by the distance travelled by the solvent form, which is 11. The RF value for this is 0 0.23. For the blue spot, the distance travelled by the spot is 5.4 and the solvent front is still a lip. That is an RF value of 0 0.49. And then finally for the green spot, the green spot has travelled 10.6. That's an RF value of 0 0.96. So the RF value is simply a ratio of how far the spot has travelled compared to how far the solvent has travelled. The RF value is distinct for each compound and each solvent mixture that is being used for chromatography. Remember to take a alert into your exam in case any of these questions come up. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.